In this section of the course, we're going to discuss Python 3 programming tools. To start off, we're going to go into iterators, generators, regular expressions, introspection, lambda functions, meta classes, and then we'll finish off with decorators. Iterators are a very elegant way of traversing data, whether it's an array or it's a dictionary. Uh, Python uh, lends itself to having a really nice, clean way of going through it and giving yourself a lot of control over it. For iterators, uh, if you want to know the definition of it, it's an object that allows a developer to traverse through the elements of a collection. And as I'll show you, it'll be multiple collection types. Uh, the two main things that you're going to want to call uh, is the iterator method, which is iter method, which by default returns itself. And then the next method, which lets you traverse down the collection one at a time. I'll also show how you can actually print out the entire collection at one time and store it inside a iterator variable. There's a number of different reasons why you want to use iterators. Uh, one, it's a very clean, elegant way to traverse through a collection. Uh, you'll see a lot of different ways of doing it, such as using for or while loops, and I'll also show that in comparison. I'll do a for in loop, uh, but then I'll also show how you can use iterators to go through a collection one at a time, because there are many times in production applications where that's necessary. Another thing it does is it decouples data from the algorithm, which essentially means that you're able to abstract away the uh, iterator side of it. So there's a number of algorithms where you want to be able to recursively go through the collection, and uh, iter is a really nice way of doing that. If you're used to other languages like, uh, like Ruby, uh, it's very similar to how enum is used. Uh, it's also a logical progression through the data collection, which one of the main reasons it's like that is because it is a, uh, a way that gives you a lot of control over what's returned and uh, when you can stop it. You're also not going to run into issues with things like infinite loops or uh, running into those kind of bugs in your code. So now that you have a good idea of what iterators are, let's jump into the code. To demonstrate how we can utilize iterators in Python, I'm going to start to show you how you can use it without having to use the iterator uh, type module. So I'm going to create a simple array. So I'm going to say my array and then just create an array literal of integers. So I'm going to just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then if I want to print this out, I could use a while loop, I could use a for loop, or in this case, I'm just going to do a for in loop. So for i, which is our iterator variable, and in my array, and then I just want to print it out. So I'm just going to print out whatever value i is at, and if I come down into the console, one very important thing to know is uh, uh, by default uh, Python, if you're using Mac, is uh, currently still using uh, 2.76. Um, so if you type in Python, you can see it uses 2.76 by default. If you want to switch to a different version, because this course is all on uh, Python 3 and above, uh, you actually need to type that in. So, And you also have to make sure it's installed in your system. So I'm going to type in Python 3.4, which is what I've installed, and then iterator. And then hit return. And there you go, it prints it out. So uh, that's just how you change which default one uh, that your system is going to use. So that's printing it out using a for in loop. Now this is great if you want to print out all the items inside of here. Uh, and this also works on dictionaries as well. So I'm going to create something. I'm going to do a dictionary of people and their respective zip codes. So I'm going to say zip dictionary and then we'll say Jordan. And that's the key, the value on it. I'll just do this. And it doesn't really matter if they're strings or uh, uh, or integers for this basis. Uh, let's see, Tiffany and 90210. And we'll give just one more. Chase and 79763. Okay, and then if we want to iterate over this, uh, then we can just swap this out and uh, it'll print us 
all of our names. And those are the keys. Uh, if we want to access the values, all we have to do is type in values, come down here, and then it prints out the values. This is great uh, if you're wanting to print all the items out, but what if you only want the first one or the first two? Uh, that's one of the spots where the iter method comes in very handy. So I'm going to just comment that out and then come down here and show you how to use that. So I'm gonna store it in a variable, so it, and then we call it using iter, and I'm gonna start off with the my array. And so that now will store the uh, the array inside of the it variable and now all we have to do is uh, call print on it so we're going to uh, print next and then put the variable inside of the next block now uh, this is very important to know uh, if you're coming from anything below python 3 uh, this would have actually looked different i believe it would have looked something like this and that would work for anything below Python 3 but uh, in this version that's actually deprecated and you need to call it this way so uh, let's see if this will work this should print out one and there you go prints out one now if we wanted to print out the first three items we can just call next three times and there you go it prints out all three of them now uh, if you want to do the same thing with our dictionary. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can copy, paste, and now do the same thing. You can see it prints out one, and we'll just, we want it to print out two items. So we're gonna call uh, our values method on dictionary. Come here, and now it should print out our zip codes. And there you go. So this is how you get iter to work and uh, the main two methods are iter and next. Uh, also just so you know there is a built-in function called stop iteration where it looks at the end of whatever collection you're iterating through and then it will actually throw an error if you go too far. So if I do four of these and then run the same method you can see it throws an error, uh, it prints out the first three throws an error and then says uh, uh, stop iteration, which this is a built in um, into the module. You can actually use stop iteration in conditionals. Uh, so you could say that you want this to iterate until you hit stop iteration. If you hit it, then you want to exit or something like that. So there's a lot of different things that you can use uh, the iteration and next modules for. Uh, it's a pretty powerful way of being able to control how you're iterating through a block. So I use the zip dictionary example because it may be something where uh, if you're creating, say, a notification system, you may want it to go through and send a email or a text message or something like that out to somebody if you hit certain alarm levels and your program instead of having to go through and create a complicated wow statement or something like that you could actually use this type of process you can use this iter to just call next on it so if I was say these are phone numbers and I was sending a text message to each one I would just call next and only have to have the one line of code and then if that failed just call next again and it would go to the next person and so on and so forth so it's a really a, a powerful tool as you create more advanced applications on how you can control uh, which items in the list that you want to go through and uh, you can do it all in a very uh, straightforward and efficient manner. Generators are a great tool for your Python arsenal. They're a way of being able to uh, essentially create iterator type of functionality but in a little bit more of an elegant way. Essentially what a generator is is it's a function that produces a sequence of results rather than a single value and we'll, if that doesn't make sense don't worry we'll go over it in detail in some great examples. Uh, it's a way to create iterator objects and the main key to remember whenever you're using generator is the yield keyword. Uh, this is another one where you have a lot of similarities between this and between Python and Ruby. Ruby uses yield throughout the entire language. So uh, yield is also used in Python when we're creating generators. And what it's used to do is to essentially define that generator function. 
Some of the main reasons to use generators are it's a very quick and efficient way of creating iterators. It's clean and concise code. We'll see how we can cut some lines of code down just by building these in. It also has improved performance, not really from a time perspective, uh, in terms of how long it takes to execute, it's around the same, but it does it with uh, being able to take up lower amounts of memory. So uh, that's another reason to do it, especially if you're using it for large enough inputs. And then it also allows the use of elements before they've been generated, which is something you'll see comes in very handy on the metaprogramming side. So now they have a good idea of what generators are, we'll jump into the code and see how they can be utilized. One of the best ways to understand how generators work is to first look at a naive implementation of how you can create the same type of functionality uh, without using the generator and the yield keyword. So to do that, I'm going to create a function called my big sum. And I'm going to pass it in a number and then I'm going to assign some variables. So I'm going to say num and nums which is going to be an array started at zero and then sent the array uh, equal to the empty array and then i'm just going to call a while loop so i'm going to say well num is less than n which is our uh, argument that we're passing in uh, then i want it to append into the nums array so i'm going to say nums append and then because we don't want to uh, we want to make sure we're not doing an infinite loop I'm going to say num plus one so this is just going to add our incrementer uh, up from zero and just keep going until it hits whatever that, that n value is and then I just want to return nums okay now to get this to work it's pretty easy we're gonna print and uh, we're going to call the built-in sum function and then pass in my big sum, uh, which is a little bit misleading because essentially the, the sum method's doing all the hard work. We're just iterating through the big array. Uh, and we're going to be passing in a big number. So let's pass in 10 million. So one, one two, three, one, two, three. Okay. And let's see how this works. So go Python. 3.4 and this is our generator file it's going to work because it's a very big number it takes a while and it is an incredibly big number uh, you can see it's in the it's either in the billions or trillions it adds up quite a bit uh, it's essentially taking each uh, number up and uh, it's creating that sum value so that's a, uh, a a very large number that you can if you really feel like it can go see what it is. So that's how you do a naive implementation of this. But now to use a generator instead, uh, we don't have to change this line. I'm just going to come up here and get rid of the body. And to do a generator, instead of setting up an array, uh, we can just set up our iterator. And from here, create a while loop, which is similar. So we'll say, well, num is equal to n. So, so far, pretty much the same, except now you notice we're not using an array. And this is where the yield keyword comes in. So we're going to say yield num, and then we still do need to increment up. Okay, and hit save, come down here, run the same command, and see if it works. And it does. You get the same exact value. Uh, this one took up less memory, and also we were able to cut down on one line of code, which isn't a lot, but uh, it's mainly because this is a very uh, basic function. Uh, if you had a very complex algorithm, this could save even more uh, in terms of lines of code and also in memory usage. And so the biggest thing to notice right here is the fact that we're not using a data structure. Uh, at least we're not one that we're calling on. So when we're using generators and we're using this yield keyword, uh, you don't actually even have to use an array the same way we did before. The generator actually does that work for us. So uh, we simply have to call yield and then uh, every time one of those values gets increased, then uh, num responds accordingly with the yield keyword and then it just is going, we, we don't have to call return on it because this value of my big sum is, uh, it knows that it's a generator because of the yield keyword and it's gonna return that value 
for us, or it's going to return essentially a collection, and then some can work with collections, and so it knows what to do with the array that gets returned, and it runs the same way as before, except we're able to cut one line of code off and uh, make it a uh, just a little bit more elegant of a look and feel. But you, this is something in your Python programs, either that you build or uh, if you take over someone else's program. If you ever see the yield keyword, this is a very popular way that it's used.